In the last video, we saw that if you have a space with a group action, which satisfies some conditions that it's a properly discontinuous group action, then the quotient map is a covering map. This was if this was a properly discontinuous group action. And today we're going to be in the same setting. So in this setting, if pi 1 of x at some base point is trivial, so x itself is simply connected, then pi 1 of x over g at the point equivalent class of x is g. This allows you to just say what the fundamental group is. Right? You construct your space as a quotient space. You know exactly what the fundamental group is. So the way we're going to prove it is we're going to write down a map f from g to pi 1 of the quotient. Then we're going to prove that it's a homomorphism, that it's an injection, that it's a surjection. So how is this map constructed? Well, for each point G in the group, I get um, a point rho G of X in X. So here's x to start with, here's rho g of x. If I want to construct a loop in the quotient space, this is this is x here, this is the quotient space. If I want to construct a loop in the quotient space based for the equivalence class of x, all I need is a path connecting x to rho g of x. Because when I project along the quotient map, when I q of x equals q of rho g of x. And this is just equivalent to x under the, under the equivalence relation. So any path gamma in x from little x to rho g of little x gives a loop compose gamma in x mod g based at the equivalence class of x this blue loop here that's what this map is going to be so f of g is going to be the homotopy class of q compose gamma So first, is that well defined? I claim that this is well defined because x is simply connected. So perhaps you can think about why that's true. Okay, so I'm, I'm claiming it's well defined. Uh, is it surjective? In other words, if I have a loop in the quotient space, can I find a path upstairs that projects down to it? Well, yes, I can by path lifting. And then the point is that the end of that path, so by path lifting there exists um, a lift uh, delta tilde of any loop delta in x over g um, with delta tilde of 0 equals x. And 
what I want is to extract an element of the group. So delta tilde of one um, is in key inverse of the equivalence class of x. In other words, it's equivalent to x. In other words, it's in the same group orbit as x. So there exists a g in g such that rho g of x equals delta tilde of 1. So this gives me surjectivity of this map from g to the fundamental group. So let's uh, look what happens if we concatenate loops. So um, f is a holomorphism. So if I do, uh, let's um, let me write like this. So here's x, here's rho g of x, here's rho h of x. I pick some path that I'm going to project down. Let me call that gamma g, and some other path over here that I'm going to project down. Let's call that gamma h. I want to relate this to rho g h of x which is equal to rho g rho h of x because it's a group action so i'm gonna draw another path here which is how might i get this path i'm going to apply rho g to gamma h right gamma h starts at x so rho g gamma h starts at rho g x finishes at rho h of x, so this guy finishes at rho g rho h of x. Okay, so this is the action of rho g. So this concatenation here, so it first does gamma g and then does rho g gamma h. That is a path from x to rho g h x. So we can now project that. So q of uh, rho g gamma h dot gamma g is um, a loop whose in, in uh, x over g whose lift connects x with rho g h of x. So by definition f of g h equals the homotopy class of this loop. Now, just looking at this loop, you can see it's a concatenation of this loop. So Q of rho G uh, gamma H with the loop Q of rho G. Right upstairs, I'm just concatenating the two paths. That means downstairs, what I get is a concatenation of two loops. Moreover, Because this rho g is the group action, and because this quotient is forgetting the group action, right? It's just identifying things that are in the same group orbit. This is the same as q rho h dot q rho g. So this is exactly the path that you would use to get f of g, and this is exactly the path you'd use to get f of h. Great. Except this doesn't look like the uh, definition of a homomorphism, right? So homomorphism would be f of g h equals f of h, uh, f of g f of h, and this is back to front. So it's actually an anti-homomorphism, 
and this is because I defined concatenation of paths back to front. Right, so I said you go first round A, then round B, write that as A, B. Such is life. Um, the reason I did this is because when you look at monodromy, monodromy turns out to be a homomorphism. And I like monodromy. This thing, this problem, in inverted commas, can be fixed by thinking instead of right actions of the group. So instead of writing rho g of x, you can use kind of Polish notation, right? Of x g is g acting on x. This is called a right action of a group. And if you require this condition as your kind of associativity condition, then that gives you a right action that that will then turn out to give you a homomorphism here the point is it doesn't matter right so a group is a group a homomorphism anti-homomorphism you know if you can prove that a anti-homomorphism is a bijection you still get that the group's right in your thick finally i want to prove injectivity well I need to prove that the kernel of this map is trivial. That's sufficient to get injectivity for homomorphisms or anti-homomorphisms. How do I do that? Well, if um, some element is in the kernel of F, then uh, that means that the loop, um, we'll call it gamma G, that I obtain by connecting these two points with a path upstairs and then projecting that down to get a loop. Um, uh, is null homotopic. So i.e. this is homotopic to the constant path. If this guy is homotopic to the constant path, then by the homotopy lifting property, this path is homotopic to the constant path rel endpoints. So by homotopy lifting, um, the path upstairs, maybe gamma g tilde, is homotopic to the constant path rel endpoints, so that the endpoints are fixed. You know, the constant path has both of its endpoints at x, so that tells us um, g of x equals x. That tells us g is the identity because this is a properly discontinuous action, so it has no fixed points like this. Okay, great. So apart from this slight cheat, this is an anti-homomorphism. It's, it's not a problem, I'm just saying I, I didn't say it to start off with. We now have a complete proof of this theorem. It means you can just read off the fundamental group from the group action that gives you the quotient. So. For example, this tells you pi 1 on the circle is z, because as we've seen, s1 is r1 z. It tells you pi 1 of the torus is z to the n, because the torus is rn over z to the n. It tells you that pi 1 of rpn is z mod 2, because rpn is the sphere, the n-sphere, over the cyclic group of order 2. Let's maybe just do one more example. Let's take R2 and just divide it up into squares like this. And 
I want to make a group action that such that when I take the quotient, I get um, basically the square with these sides identified in this way. So that the, the top and bottom are identified with arrows going the same way. The left and right hand side have the arrows switched. So in this case, the quotient of whatever this whatever this group is here, the quotient will be the climb model. So what group could I take? Well, here's a line in R2. If I reflect in that line, this arrow goes to this arrow, this arrow gets turned upside down. That's not quite what I want. I want that reflection together with a translation in this direction. Right, and that will then send this arrow upside down and over here. So I claim that in, in uh, coordinates, that is the map x, y goes to x plus 1, 1 minus y. Right, you move forward by 1 in the x direction, and for example, height 1 goes down to height 0, height 0 goes up to height 1, so you switch the direction of this arrow. So that's one element of my group. The other element that I'm going to use to generate the group is going to be just translations in the vertical direction. So these are two elements in the isometry group of the plane. They generate a group. So if I just take all possible combinations all possible words in G and H. This gives me a group G. And from what I've said, that quotient of R2 by that group is a Klein bottle. So pi 1 of the Klein bottle is G. Once you've checked that this is a properly discontinuous group action, for example, you need to do that. That's okay because this is an isometry group, this is a metric space, so you just need to check that these transformations move by some definite amount. So I claim that you can actually give a presentation for this group generated by these two guys by definition, and these two guys satisfy a relation which I think is HG equals g h and there has to be an inverse on one of these h's maybe this one no I, th I think it's the other one let's check what does this mean this means if i f on the right hand side first i do g h inverse of x y that's doing h inverse first so i get x y minus one g of this is x plus 1 and 1 minus this so 1 minus minus 1 is 2 and minus y and on the other hand if i do h g x y what i get is uh, h of x plus 1 1 minus y and that is x plus 1 2 minus y which is the same Okay, so this relation holds because you can just check it in coordinates. And actually this relation is enough, that's the only relation you need, because you can use it to move all the H's onto one side. So, um, right, so one, one, once you've got this relation, you know, you, you can write any element as, um, let's say, G to the N, H to the N use this relation to move all of the G's onto the left, all the H's onto the right. And now, as long as you can prove this combination is always non-trivial, unless n equals n equals zero, that tells you there are no other relations. Otherwise, you'd be setting one of these equal to the identity map. So what I actually need to do is I need to look at G, M, H, N, X, 
press Y and I need to check it's not just the identity map and actually what I need to do to, to get proper discontinuity is to check it moves X Y by a definite amount depending on M and N so let's just compute it first I do H N H increases Y by 1 so H N increases Y by N G increases X by 1 and reflects it does this reflection so if you do it an odd number of times it does the reflection if you do it an even number of times it does nothing in the Y direction so I get X plus N and then either 1 minus Y minus N or Y plus N if this is if N is uh, sorry N is odd and this is if N is even So I claim that means g to the m, h to the n is the identity if and only if m equals n equals 0 just by looking at this formula. And in fact, the distance between the point x, y and the point g to the m, h to the n, x, y, I claim is always bigger than or equal to 1 if m and n are not equal to zero. That tells you that it's properly discontinuous. Which then implies that in fact this is the phonological group of the Klein bottle. This G. Okay, you can check this for yourselves just by looking at this formula.